sister, I know be your brider, 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 brider. Give me one chance, make I be your fighter, fighter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Chick Chat Live. My name is Cornelia O'Dwyer, and on the show today we are talking about talking yourself up. Our hot topic of the day is the online you versus the real life you. Joining me in the studio today are some beautiful ladies. I'll start off with retail entrepreneur, founder of So Aesthetics Cosmetics, Sasha Oko. Hi. Welcome to the show. I also have Edma Lawa, who is the founder of You Global. Welcome Hello. to the show. Thank, Thank you for joining much. me. And Abdaku Ufer, a one energy and gender consultant. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for nice having title. Me. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a new tradition of the show. Before we throw out the question, we have the Ghana Accra edition of Monopoly. Okay. So I want you guys to pick a number between two and twelve. Okay. We're gonna roll the dice. Whoever has the number closest to the dice gets to answer the first question. Okay. So I'm gonna pick at random. Edna, you do the honors. Um number seven. Sasha. Um 10, 4. Okay, go ahead. Adapt okay. it. Roll the dice. This What's is six. 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 So she goes first. Seven. Oh, yeah, okay. well. <laughs> so, I mean, on the first segment, I kind of wanted to break down, you know, the general um, discomfort that we as women have with talking ourselves up. Yeah. I find that when I go to a job interview or where people ask me to sell myself or even, for, even on social media, like you have to package and put, you know, project the best version of yourself. Yeah. So I want to kind of address, for, for starters, are you comfortable with talking yourself up or is this something you struggle with? Um, to be honest, I feel like I'm okay at it mm -hmm. in terms of if I have to sell myself mm -hmm. to maybe somebody or like a job or something like, of course, I want to get hired. So mm -hmm. I'll say the best things about myself. But mm -hmm. In general, um, if somebody comes to me and they're like, okay, so what do you like about yourself? I'll feel a bit shy saying it because yeah. I don't want to sound like overly vain mm -hmm. and I don't want them to have like a perspective of me like, mm -hmm. oh, this girl, she thinks she's all that or, you know. So um, I'd rather just let people compliment me mm -hmm. instead of like me complimenting myself mm -hmm. or saying the good things about myself. I'd rather like people seeing the good things in me mm -hmm. and then telling me and I'm like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> you know, I already know, but yeah, I'm okay. like, thank you. Okay. Instead of um, me just constantly telling people like, oh, this is what I have to offer or this mm -hmm. is what I'm good at and, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. But um, it's quite hard yeah. to... Um, so do you think that you're more comfortable with scripting it because you know you're, you're doing it strategically for the interview? So are you being honest about the things you're saying in the interview? Or are you saying this is what they want to hear? Let me say these things. Or have you resolved? Are, are you confident in the, in the character traits that you're, you know? Yes, I'll, I'll probably say I am confident, yes. But I do sort of add a lot extra <laughs> to it just so um, the no... Um, that mm -hmm. I'm the one for the job. job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, like I said, in general life or mm -hmm. um, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I wouldn't go out there and be like, yeah, I'm good at this or I'm good at that. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just people tell me that, okay, you're good at this good. and you've done well doing so and so. Like, Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that the same for you? No, I don't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. um, I think mostly because of my profession. Mm -hmm. yeah. I work in the oil and gas industry, so I'm mm -hmm. an energy lawyer. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very male-dominated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, men don't have a problem mm -hmm. being out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the average man is really the equal of, like, an exceptional woman. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any choice but to talk okay, myself up. Okay, better say that again. <laughs> the average man is... Is equal, in their minds, is equal to an exceptional mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a mediocre mm -hmm. man... Is will think himself the equal of an exceptional woman. Mm -hmm. So you you can't. We're we're fighting a battle in where we already looked at as less. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you kind of hide yourself, you're taking yourself you know further and further down. So you need mm -hmm. to. And again, I'm six feet tall. It's mm -hmm. very hard for me to hide. Yeah. So I might as well. <laughs> we see you, girl. You know, <laughs> I might as well. So no, I don't. I don't have a problem with it. It's necessary for me to, be able to do my job properly. I'm a mm -hmm. lawyer. I negotiate contracts. I can't be like, oh, okay, maybe you should do this this way. Mm -hmm. No, I have to be firm. I have to, you know, speak up all the time. And then I also have to show them I have these credentials. So when I'm speaking, yes, I've done this, yes, I've done that. If you think mm -hmm. it's your, I'm bragging, that's your own insecurity speaking. Okay. That's not my personal problem, mm -hmm. but at least I know what I do. Is this something that you have come to be, or is this something that you always, you've always, you've always been a, a pretty, pretty confident person? 
I've always been confident, but mm -hmm. I've not always been a talker. I, okay. As a child, I was. Okay. And then puberty hit, and I grew five inches in three months, and I was taller than everybody else. And then I got the, you know, mm -hmm. when you're a teenager and you're shy. Yeah. So yeah. my teenagers were very quiet. And then I hit my, you know, 19s and 20, and I suddenly, I don't know, suddenly this height was attractive. It was, I'm coming out. <laughs> <laughs> so my former, like, I guess my inborn confidence, mm -hmm. you know, started to come out more. So, I mean, if you, I mean, look at, you know, what I do, I constantly promote myself. If I mm -hmm. speak at a conference, I'm posting on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. And those have led to further opportunities. Mm -hmm. There's so many jobs and, you know, deals I've gotten just because of my online presence. Mm -hmm. So it's it's almost currency. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. I don't speak... You better say like, that word currency on the show. <laughs> you, you better talk, girl. <laughs> and if I don't let people know, I'm kind of like doing all these things in a vacuum because how mm -hmm. would they know, especially for law, because it's such a... We're supposed to be, it's very secretive in yes, a way. Yes. I mean, like, in, yeah. I, I'm Nigerian. It's a discreet profession. And in our Legal Practitioners Act, you can't advertise yourself. Lawyers mm -hmm. don't advertise. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Have you ever seen an ad for a lawyer in Nigeria? Yeah. It's not possible. Yeah. So if you say, I did this or I do this, and mm -hmm. you're just saying it on Twitter, yeah. you're not advertising, you're telling people what you do, but then that's how they know. Mm -hmm. So for, I don't think any woman can afford to not talk herself up. But you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't. Do you feel the need to be? personally relevant besides your business so you're in cosmetics do you let the brand sort of speak Honestly, for itself yeah. in general I'm reserved okay and I've always been reserved so mm -hmm. it's really overwhelming the whole social media, media yeah and then it's so effective as well once you have a business because mm -hmm. I've seen the results I've seen the of putting yourself out yeah, there yeah of course mm -hmm. and I'm still learning every day I think mm -hmm. it's, I, I, I wouldn't say it's another generation but I just feel lost in it yes yes and I've actually actually uh, stores out people to actually help me because I realized that because you need to have good content as well. Yeah. I'm one of those. I'd rather have good content than just to put myself out there. Oh, yeah. Even though at the same time, I do believe that people want to see the real you. Mm -hmm. yeah. The more transparent you are, the mm -hmm. more real you are, the more they can connect with mm -hmm. you. But at the same time, I feel like whatever brand you'd like to portray or to be, you mm -hmm. have to work around it. So mm -hmm. right now, that's what I'm working on. So, um, so would that be yes? Like you feel personal relevance somewhat plays yeah, a role yes, in, yeah, in, in, in your business? Of course. So did you course. did you come to discover that? Were you pushing the brand like um, forward before you honestly, or you kind of managed both? Honestly, I've had a brand that has really worked. I'm one of those old tradition, if it ain't broke, you might fix it. So yeah. I know before that, I was just, it was just, I just had a, I mean, was successful, was doing yeah. really well. But then mm -hmm. I made my business talk for mm -hmm. itself. And now I, it's a whole different ball game as, you know, with yeah. social media. The funny thing about talking yourself up, right, is um, that you may say something like really great about yourself and uh, the opinion of somebody else may contradict that whole opinion that you have. So I may say, hey, I'm a happy-go-lucky, successful singer, songwriter representing Africa. And you may ask somebody else, and that person may be like, well, she aight, you know, she's upcoming, um, but she's a bitch, you know? And so like, I guess that's the reason why a lot of women, especially women I feel like in Nigeria, have a hard rap or get shy when they have to like talk themselves up or say, you know, unless you're undoubtedly, you know, killing the game. Self-promotion is a, is a real, challenge let me say for me because i'm definitely one of those people who doesn't like to aggrandize things about myself i'm more likely to be more self-deprecating than anything so it's like i'm like i'm not that great I'm, I'm just okay like chill like don't put me on like don't put me on this pedestal because i cannot deal with the pressure so it's been a challenge for me but let me even tell you one way that i've kind of what I'm trying to find a middle ground with is actually getting other people to do it for you. So uh, obviously I have my personal, well, I don't want to say, I will never say that. I have my personal Instagram page, let me see, to be more explicit. I have my personal personality, and then I also have my business profiles. So my business profiles, I don't touch, I don't handle, I can't deal with, because guess what? I have crazy tunnel vision. I don't see myself the way other people see myself. And I'm more likely to self-sabotage because not because I don't believe in myself, but just because I mean I'm me. 
I've seen everything about me. I know the worst and the best parts of me better than anybody else. So I'm very, very less likely to toot my own horn. It's just, I think it's a personality thing as well because I also find that a lot of people find it so easy to say all these amazing things about themselves and amazing things that they're doing. It actually, actually kind of rubs me off the wrong way in a, way, in a sense. But I think that that also has to do with my own personal feelings about people who are like that. Um, so yeah, like I said, I think it's, it's if you understand that you kind of need to do some extent of self-promotion and you know that you cannot do yourself, you need to get other people to do it for you. Like if you're going to hire a PR brand, if you're going to hire a social marketing or digital marketing person to kind of manage that profile for you. But on a personal level, like me, I try to really be as authentic as possible. Like I'm not, I don't pretend to be somebody that, and I, and I think everybody says that actually. So maybe I'm just saying what everybody else says. I try not to over exaggerate things about me and my personal profile is pretty much exactly what it is. Like it's very, very obvious. It's very clear. Like I go to the gym, I'm about my children, I'm about just being a clown in general and I do work. Like, so I'm very, very open about it. I don't try to pretend like this is exactly who I am. I'm just like, hey, this is me. For me, self-promotion literally means selling who I am my worth, my work, um, the value that I'm bringing. And it's taking me a long time for me to accept, number one, that I, I have value and I am a value-adding individual, whether as a person or as a brand. And that also caused a lot of struggle because I didn't know how to monetize it such that I would get opportunities and I will start to downplay how much I think I'm worth in terms of the service that I'm providing or whatever it is I'm doing on the project. So I have evolved into the person who I now understand has value, is bringing value on the project. And for that reason, I will tell you categorically how I know, how much I know that I'm worth. And you'll decide whether or not you can pay. If you cannot pay, it's okay. There's no fight. I will say, you know, we'll bid each other farewell and whatever it is that happens, whether our paths cross in future, however it is. But I realize that a lot of this is embedded in culture. And a lot of this happens from our upbringing. That's not also saying that people, some people actually naturally have the personality to just sell themselves. But for people like myself who did not know whether we had the personality to sell ourselves or whether we had value, it's taken me years for me to understand, see, and also accept that, okay, young lady, you have value. And for that one reason, I have broken free from the cultural background that makes me understand that, oh, if you don't have this humility. There is a place for humility and there's a place where you need to literally say, I have done this, I have done this, and I have done this. And for that reason, I can also do this or give me the opportunity to do the next thing. And if that doesn't work, then it's fine. Um, culture has played a role. Personality has played a role. But right now we see that we've had to unlearn certain things as adults. And when life happens, you have to literally sit back and say, wait, if I've done so and so before, it means I can also do this. And yeah, I think for me, it's unlearning what I have subconsciously learned through the years and also accepting that I'm bringing value. And that in turn has helped me now promote who it is that I am daily becoming. And I know you talked about feeling, you know, shy and feeling like I'm you'd rather, shy. yeah, yeah. And, and I think that that's a lot of the reason why, you know, you get into an interview room and they say, you know, what's unique about you? And I'm like, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's just like you, you can't really prepare for when people make you look inside. So when it comes to like validating yourself, if you've ever moved careers or started a new job and you don't really feel confident about the new position mm. or you're evolving into, you're becoming, yeah. right? How do you sort of um, deal with, you know, imposter syndrome? Do you, do you, do you, do you, are, are you, do you have imposter syndrome? To be honest, like, even though, like, I'm very shy in terms of, like, saying the things that I do or um, telling people that I'm good at this or I'm good at that in general, mm -hmm. um, I'm still a very confident person. Mm -hmm. And I know when to be confident mm -hmm. and when to be humble. Yeah. And sometimes I'm not overpowering when it comes to my confidence because mm -hmm. I don't want people to also see as as arrogant. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it depends of what situation I'm in. But if I'm in a workplace and I'm new there, like we were discussing, I just recently moved to Ghana mm -hmm. and um, three weeks ago. So in that case, I'll definitely make sure that people know that I didn't come here to play. Yeah. And, you know, okay. I'm here. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, I'm here to like do whatever I came here to do and to mm -hmm. achieve whatever I came to Ghana to achieve. So in that case, I wouldn't really want people to cross my path or mm -hmm. see me as um, a different person than what I am really. 
um, I, I really am. And um, yeah, when it comes to that, I would definitely portray my confidence and yeah. put whatever I have, yeah. you know, out there and um, let people know that I'm small, but I'm 19. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess since you guys, uh, we'll, we'll come to the social media, mm-hmm. we'll delve a little bit deeper into social media um, on the next segment. But I guess since you guys are established, maybe I should throw a question. Let me start with you because it's currency, right? <laughs> so I guess since you are... Um, so aware of you know a, a lot of you. If I were to ask you what the top five things you liked about yourself were, would you be able to go? Okay, go ahead. So she go right yeah. now. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that I'm tall. I like the fact that I attract attention, so I don't have to do a lot mm-hmm. to be noticeable. Okay. I like the fact that I am assertive. Uh-huh. I know what I want, and I like what I like, and mm-hmm. I'm not easily swayed. Okay. Uh, I like the fact that I'm confident in myself and in my mm-hmm. abilities. It's, it's never proven me wrong. Like, mm-hmm. no, whatever I, it is that I do, I do it well. I used to be a blogger. The time I was a top blogger in Nigeria, I won awards. Mm-hmm. As a lawyer, I won awards as a lawyer. As a writer, I've done that as well. So mm-hmm. I feel like I like the fact that I have a lot of confidence in my abilities. If I were to fly mm-hmm. a plane today, I would win an award for best pilot. I'm very sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that I I have the gift of the gab. Okay. I know how... Well, clearly, girl, because you're convincing <laughs> us right now. <laughs> uh, and I think it's another thing about being a lawyer. We know how to... Talk, yeah. yes, <laughs> to talk. You might not know too much about the topic, but the time we've bamboozled you with a few yeah. words, we yeah. sound like experts. So uh-huh. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm very proud of that because yeah. it's not, it's not, not easy, easy to come by. And I like the fact that um, I don't, I reject likability. Mm-hmm. I don't need to be liked. I'm not okay. interested in okay. being liked. Okay. I could care less if anybody liked me. Mm-hmm. You know, I as long as I know I'm doing what needs to be done, I'm yeah. not disrespecting yeah. anybody. I live my life by the harm principle. As long as I'm not harming anybody, then... Um, when did you, know, you come to that place of rejecting? I like the way you you you, you worded that. Oh, rejecting she's like... Ability. From Amanda. Okay. She's my love. <laughs> yes. Rejecting um, like ability. Um, I think I've always... Have, have you like faced it. some kind of... Because I think a lot of conversations that happen about us usually happen without us being yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah. I think that social media has helped us to project the best version of ourselves. Exactly. So, Which is what but, it's for. Yes. But mm-hmm. in, in person, you're meeting people. And like you said, you're not always going to be everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. So how did you own that and, and sort of embrace the, I don't need to be liked? And what was it about you that you feel wasn't likable? I'm a shy person. You won't mm-hmm. believe that, but I truly am. I'm mm-hmm. not good around people I don't know. I'm mm-hmm. not good at, you know, small talk. I'm mm-hmm. not very good at that. Put me in front of an audience and mm-hmm. say, talk about the subject. I would okay. do it brilliantly. Yeah. But put me in a room with people mm-hmm. and I'm just going to stand on my own. I okay. will do it. Okay. So, um, I think, so being that way, obviously I've had to put in more effort because mm-hmm. of my job and being able to network and all that. And you realize that there's really nothing you can do to make people like you. Mm. You, 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 yeah. you realize that very yeah. fast. Yeah. It's like that story of the, 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 the man and his wife and a donkey. Oh, why is your wife and a donkey? Or then why is she walking? Like, yeah. mm-hmm. There's nothing you can do to make people mm-hmm. like you. And I, obviously, when I was younger, and it's the way girls are, girls are raised. Girls are raised to be nice, to mm-hmm. not offend. You know, mm-hmm. and I was never like that. So I found myself having to kind of hold myself back a lot. And I didn't like that because I never thought I was giving the best version of myself. Mm-hmm. So this is not something... Well, what know, was the best version? To check people when they needed to be <laughs> checked? <laughs> or just, you know, no yeah. way to say something. Yeah. So obviously, as a young, when you're a young woman, it's, it's difficult to get to that point. Mm-hmm. You have to kind of scale through your 20s. Because mm-hmm. yeah. now I'm 33. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's been a journey for me yeah. to get to this point. I have failed. I have, you know, been rejected. I've gotten all of that for me to go to a point where I'm completely comfortable in myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very self-aware. I know mm-hmm. my gifts. I know my failures. I know, you know, I know myself. So there's very, very little anybody can do to make me doubt myself or make mm-hmm. me feel like I have to be this way so you will like me if you don't like me. No, I think growing up, you know, I struggled with my weight, up and down. Uh-huh. I've never really been, I've been confident in what I do as in my work. I'm more behind the scene. But when it mm-hmm. comes to, I'm usually the one who, be late or I'll come in and just sit in the corner somewhere. Mm-hmm. I'll rather not be noticed and just yeah. do my job. So that's yeah. me personally. Yeah. And I'm not complaining. I'm yeah. very humble. <laughs> but um to a fault sometimes because uh-huh. it goes against you. Yeah. And I really admire the fact that you can actually just tell people. Yeah. Yeah. And it is what it is. Um, but that's that's just me. And um, I'm good in communicating as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm 
I think I'm a people's person, but I'm still very reserved. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think that that can also come across because I think that talking yourself up doesn't necessarily always have to be talking. It could really yeah. mean showing up. Yeah. It could really be yeah. me being, you know what, she's the most diplomatic person for the job. Just, that's what I was yeah. like. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily go to people and say, I'm good at this, I'm good at that. I'll let my actions and whatever I'm doing like speak for my, like, myself mm -hmm. and let whatever I portray, mm -hmm. um, let that talk for me. Instead but of I like, feel like sometimes opportunities come and you just need to tell people yes, the real course. deal in this yeah. time. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than waiting for people to figure you out, yeah. it takes too long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially for women. Yeah. It's yeah. Women for us. Yeah. 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 Some people are very judgmental. Mm -hmm. Yes. And men, yes. that's why, like, a, 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 I don't know, a lower income man mm -hmm. who would see, like, a CEO woman and boldly step to her and say, you know, go out with me. Mm -hmm. That confidence men have, my mm -hmm. goodness. Do you think all men have that confidence? A lot. Okay, well, I need to hang out with where you, a lot. you hang it out. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. There's, I, a, there's a confidence that men have that women need to start having. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, there's, there's studies that have shown some men, some men yeah. most men, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's studies that have shown that, you know, when applying for a job, mm -hmm. if women don't match up to like 10 out of the 10 qualities, they don't apply. Men will mm -hmm. get like three and they will still apply. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing when we're trying to get raises. Men are able to say, mm -hmm. I've done this, I've done that, give me a raise. Mm -hmm. I'm like, eh. Maybe let me see if they'll see my merits. Mm -hmm. You can't keep doing that because this is it's very it's a very uneven race. Well, thank you guys. We're gonna move on to the next segment of the day. That's it for the first segment. We'll come back with the hot topic of the day, talking about the online you versus the real life you. Stay with us. My boss is a high society inspirational woman. She sits on a few advisory boards and is a member of a few women focused business groups. She projects a positive online and social image and promotes positive images for young women. She charges a minimum of $5,000 for speaking engagements and generally preaches prosperity is yours if you work hard and maintain integrity. She's a technology guru and has over 20 years of experience and always ends her keynotes with, be committed to excellence. As one of the few women in this field, I had a major respect for her. She built a startup from scratch and now runs a consulting company and has brokered a number of impressive deals. Her career is one that most people aspire to. I have devoted five years to the company and decided I was ready to leave and start my own business. I discussed it with my boss, especially because of her interest in inspired leadership, business growth and entrepreneurship for women. But she was not too pleased with me wanting to leave and felt that I should stay a little longer and that the world of entrepreneurship isn't as easy as I think. I wasn't keen on continuing on as I had a sense of urgency to pursue my own goals. She turned nasty before I can transition out and found a reason to fire me. In trying to wrap up this mess, I asked for my pension as I wanted to transfer my pension to a different RSA, only to find out that after much back and forth, I had no pension. She had been deducting 7.5% of our salaries every month, but had not paid it into our pension fund custodian accounts. Many look up to my boss, but since this is Africa, it's quite easy to do and undo without consequence. She has not picked up my calls or responded to my emails, and I'm torn between giving in to my impulse and putting her on blast for being a fake. She's clearly not who she projects to be online, and I'm so livid. I run the risk of looking like a bitter employee who was fired, but I just feel cheated. However, my mum has advised me to let karma do the work. Should I shame her, or should I really let go and let karma? Her image is a complete farce, and far from who she projects to be online. Well, welcome back to the show. You guys heard how crazy that story was. I'm sure some of you are burning up inside. It's now time to find out what our studio guests have to say. I'm going to put it over to you, Sasha. What do you think about that crazy story? Like, what would you do if you were in a situation? Honestly, like I think that? the boss is just crazy. Well, well, how would you handle it? But then, um, with my personality, I'll probably reach out to a colleague in the office mm -hmm. and speak to them about it first before even thinking of getting any um, legal aid, okay. just advice. Okay. You know what I mean? I wouldn't go on social media to blast her because, mm -hmm. I mean, from just reading what you said, mm -hmm. she's planning to have her own business. Mm -hmm. And it's bad PR for even mm -hmm. her potential customers. If mm -hmm. she has issues with her clients, yeah. she would just blast their, all, you know, business, their whole yeah. business on social media. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I would have I would do first. So, because well, you have legal in the back she, of yeah, your mind. Yeah, because yeah. she's had reached out to her boss several times mm -hmm. by emails and calls. Yeah. So what else can she do, do than to either speak to someone 
one of her colleagues, maybe, mm -hmm. you, you know, a higher position mm -hmm. or get legal help. But in speaking to the colleagues, wouldn't that be now exposing, the, like magnifying the situation? Because it, it may not just be her own pension, it, it may or be maybe it everybody's be, it, no, pension. So she could you find out I mean? reasons why, maybe to mm -hmm. find out why, you know, they didn't pay her pension. Mm -hmm. No, find out, I think it's good to know before you attack. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There could be so many reasons. A lot of people come out very confident, but they're dealing with so many issues. But then I know that is the accounts. Mm -hmm. I know I do. I do Sasha, get it. You have been a bit accommodating, no. No. <laughs> no, 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 It's a crime. It's, a crime. it's not that they gave you like they shortchanged you by like three CDs. It's like seven point five. Yeah. Okay, lawyer. Yeah. That's the word, crime. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so legally, how would you, would have, how would you handle yeah. it? Personally, well, yeah. I know she'd really left the company when she found out. So you kind of exactly escalated to management because you're yes. no longer in that company. Mm -hmm. Well, management her. is the boss, though. So there's no way it's I would, I would, I would sue her. I'll report mm -hmm. her to the police. Yeah, because it's a crime. Report her to the police and then sue her and I get my money back. The company that we're in Africa. Exactly. No, but they suing that. Well, so that's about, a thing, though. Dealing with, because I, I just want to put this into in, into perspective of people mm -hmm. who maybe haven't gotten paid. You know, like yeah. especially in Nigeria mm -hmm. and you know, on the continent. There are people who go to work. You can go to work Monday through Friday and you haven't gotten paid for yeah. three to six months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So beyond pension, but this is see, the thing. And then you see your boss. Because uh -huh. I heard a story of, um, of, of some employees that um, sold the generator. Yeah. So the boss was in London. The boss had traveled yeah, for a couple of that. months. Mm -hmm. And they sold story. the gen. And I was like, oh my God. And they split the gen for their salary. And I just thought, oh my yes. God, who does that? So... But, but you I know mean, what the problem is? A lot of... Well, Africans, we're not very yeah, litigious. Yes. Yeah. We're not litigious. We don't know the, the, the actual, you know, power we have. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because the courts, I know the courts are not the best, but they mm -hmm. do work. Yeah, but when, when, when you have to pay legal costs exactly. and deal with, exactly with labor issues. Is it, is it now, it's probably not even worth the money that... Trust me, with the, labor issues, mm -hmm. I know how many employ, employment harassment cases I've worked on with labor issues is taken very seriously. A lot mm -hmm. of things we don't think, like... Things in with, Nigeria? Yes, with in Ghana? things like custody payments, mm -hmm. you know, family courts, mm -hmm. it's a bloodbath. Mm -hmm. Most women don't know they can they can take their husbands to court for not paying child support. And then those judges there, they will award you the man's entire life history if you want. And what if he doesn't show up? Or do, do, do people accuse? He will, sh he will show up. Okay. They're bailiffs. Okay. You see, that's the thing. We don't think it works. So mm -hmm. we don't take advantage of these mm -hmm. things. Labor issues are very serious. And mm -hmm. some, and pension fraud, because she didn't just steal from the... She actually went against the law. It's law. like a mm -hmm. constitutional right. Your pension is your pension. Mm -hmm. Pension fraud is a serious problem. They will charge all her, her assets. The court will sell it and the court mm -hmm. will pay you your money. Mm -hmm. Or they will take charge of her account. Mm -hmm. As money is coming in, they're paying it to you. It's not even mm -hmm. getting to her. I guess so, that's why it's best to get legal aid. Exactly. So advice. legal yes. advice, what do From I do? Know what what are my options? But it's not a matter of, oh, come, you know, let's let's talk about it quietly. No, she doesn't want to talk to you. She doesn't want to talk to her. Yes. So, um, she already knows what she's done. So exactly. I can imagine the reason and, why and she's doing she's, defensive. And she's thinking that because yes. Africans don't go to court, yes. they don't involve, they don't, I just leave her, you know, don't spoil her name. Don't spoil mm -hmm. her. Yes. Take down your business. <laughs> I'm not going to go on Instagram and blast because I, I never do that. But you know what? But I will make around, yeah. sure that mm -hmm. that business is run to the ground. Because if she's stealing from from me, mm -hmm. she's definitely stealing from everybody else. That's true. She's yeah. stealing from everybody. So you don't pity that like, ah, person. Is they not think about you? They don't mm -hmm. pity you when they were stealing from you. Why should mm -hmm. you think about her now? Mm -hmm. These are the consequences mm -hmm. of her actions. She has to deal with them. But mm -hmm. the thing with Africa, like here, is that. Most people also like fear. There's a lot of fear when it comes to maybe dealing with like rich the people. boss or yeah. the power rich people. Yeah. Exactly. The power that they believe that that individual has, mm -hmm. they will they feel some type of fear to even confront them or to, you know, let them know that you need to give me my money. Right, yeah. Because I've had a lot of cases as well where, like, they wouldn't even dare take legal charges against them mm -hmm. because, like, they feel like, oh, no, this person is just too powerful for, for me to me, even yeah. try to, like, mm -hmm. go against them. Mm -hmm. They might, I don't know, do something to me mm -hmm. and the next minute I'm dead on the street mm -hmm. or something like that, you know? Yes. And, like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it does happen. Or yeah. maybe I've just watched too many Hollywood <laughs> movies, but, like, it does happen mm -hmm. and it, it's, it's the fear as well of wanting to go against somebody as powerful mm -hmm. obviously from that story in particular that particular lady is, is she's quite known but especially she's on even worse because she's yeah. like a motivate motiva exactly. Exactly. Yes. 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 exactly exactly yes. so she's yes. of yes. course yes. So i was actually yes. just going to come to that yeah like, okay when we pull you it back into she's a fraud. the online you versus the real life you mm. and it is yeah. possible that she could have had um, uh, struggles with the business and maybe that was the only way. But then you have but to you let your employees know. 
if that's I don't the think case. you can announce that kind of thing. Do you no, think I'll give permission honest, because, for you to take from my? Mm, no, I mean, how would you say? There's, how there's, would you there's, like there's no, no there's excuse. There's, I don't think that's a legit yeah. excuse. I don't think it's strong enough I'm for you to. I'm not saying it's an excuse, but mm. I'm just saying that at least it doesn't sound like she was outright stealing. Because I think what makes this woman sound a bit more wicked is the fact that you are seeing probably see her bags, you see her design. You see, she's very flashy and she's projecting the best version of herself. Mm-hmm. Don't look at it. We try to make excuses for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, people steal like 30 naira and then they send them to prison for 30 exactly. years. Or they stone them there and then. But your governor steals 100 billion. And it's like, ah. So you're saying rich people don't face the consequences. No, no, no. Okay. And we then we should push it. So what about people who are on the lower end of the um, spectrum who mm-hmm. actually, like you said, mm-hmm. cannot face this woman? It could be a house girl. It could be yeah. somebody who they haven't paid it's, her complete it's, salary. It's, it's, How would you advise that person to go for this person. The, someone that doesn't understand what legal aid is, yeah. someone that doesn't even know that they can get legal aid, what is the local mm-hmm. way Bring to deal with this members. woman? You know what I mean? In, you know what? Your uncles, your what is the local way to deal with somebody like there, this? There's this thing, I think it's in India, when um, a man is not taking care of his children, mm-hmm. a whole group of Indian women go and sit in front of his house and they sing and dance all night. He can't leave his house. <laughs> they sing and dance in front of his house until mm-hmm. the man gives up and mm-hmm. just pays. Mm-hmm. So that's the local job of justice. Just, yeah. They're doing yeah. this because they have no other recourse. Yeah. But the thing about like Africans, we tend to just, mm, let me leave it to God. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. as she said, the mm-hmm. person is too powerful. Mm-hmm. If you you know you cannot go through the legal channels, which a lot of people, we know a lot of people cannot do, mm-hmm. jungle justice is the way forward. So carry, find, carry, find, I mean, carry like 20 of your aunties. The only, the only <laughs> advice I can give is obviously mm-hmm. go through the legal route. I would... Definitely put the woman on blast, probably via Instagram or some social media platform, um, so that the rest of her employees would take heed and um, probably revolt against the woman, and that would teach the woman a lesson, never to do that kind of stuff again. Um, It's wrong, and unfortunately the rich go unpunished in this country. And so I think that something like that, like if you go to the police, what do the police want to do? They'll give the police something small and they will leave. If you go to your lawyer, he'll collect your money, waste your time, and still nothing. But if you go to social media, I think the public, the people, will definitely blow it up. And probably most likely, you'll find that so many other people are, have been in your shoes before. And then that way you can not just only shame the woman, but help your, you know, your former co-workers. So my take on the story is her former boss is delusional to start with. And I think it's a narrative that we see quite often. I don't know if it's an African thing only because I haven't lived outside of Africa for so long or walked outside of Africa for me to have some form of comparison. So I would rather relate to the story. I think it's more maybe Nigerian where people just feel like we are your makers. So because we made you, we can equally destroy you. And I wanted to myself, why does it feel like entrepreneurs, sole proprietors feel like they, they, they have all the power in the world to do as they please? And it's only because there are no laws. So because we have laws, tax laws, I would say first thing this lady has to do is to make sure that she reports to the authorities. It sounds very, ah, that is harsh. They work in the same industry. She'll probably need her again in future. Oh, she, oh, she would need her. And nobody spoke to the woman not to do that. Report to the th- tax authorities. If you do not want to report to tax authorities, maybe you can now start to do the cultural. And you know anyone that is close to her that can speak to her to see what she can do. Once you see that she's not creating an avenue for you to speak, it means that when the elders bring up the conversation you have done yours as a younger person because it always goes ah oh, you're younger and all these children you have done that you have tried your own form of negotiation or mediation and it didn't work report to the authorities they will get you back your money it may take a while but the reality is she'll probably also go around town spoiling your name own your story you don't have to share your story with everyone when the time is right people will hear your version of the story and anybody can make up their conclusions you worked for it it's a different case if you did not work. You worked for it. So you earned, you have literally earned how many years of your life for someone to take, no, come on, please report. And I'm hoping that she will not just be fined, but she'll do time because we have laws. If I were the aggrieved here, it's easy to say this because I'm not the aggrieved. But, you know, if I were the aggrieved, I, I don't think I would put the person on blast. 
in the obvious places like on social media or whatever i think i would want to handle it in real life because those places are not actual real life i'd want to do everything it is that is, is is the right way because i want to remain the victim i don't want to end up being like well you also did this and you also did this. like no okay so she did this approached her told her she could rectify it offline she said she wouldn't got my lawyers involved and handled it that way i'm not gonna throw you know drag anybody in the mud because guess what you're all gonna get dirty so there's no point just do it the right way and handle it you know with the full extent of the law right and let's not get you know into the whole the yeah she needs to pay she needs to pay fine you know whatever it is it's really not up to you to punish her she needs to get she needs to do what she's meant to do but then if she doesn't again it's really not meant it's not up to you to punish her okay so let's sort of shift it to where we now draw the line with this social media thing and projecting mm -hmm. the best versions of ourselves because obviously this, this woman is now a pass mm -hmm. and i was having a conversation with a cousin of mine and we were talking about um he gets um his lunch paid for by his work and he's always going out i mean he's in the u.s he's always going out every moment on his instagram is on expensive food expensive restaurants like he just projects his life but it's actually paid for by his company. So I said, ah, so that's how some girl would date you and now think that, man, it's fancy dinners every night. And, you know, like, he was like, so what am I supposed to do? Put hashtag my company pays for this. And I'm like, um, I don't think you should put, but I was like, well, you're not necessarily telling the truth either. You know what I mean? He was like, well, that's your perception and I'm not, I'm not responsible for exactly. your perception. Yeah, exactly. Even just on social media, just be standing next to a flash car. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And people can make all sorts of stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody knows whether you're walking past it or you're, mm -hmm. you're it's your friends or it's yeah. yours. Exactly. You yeah, but you know there's some people that there's some people that are actually package it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So should should should, nature. should we be packaging? Nature. Of course you should package. Why not? Okay. It's human okay. nature to show the best. I'm not saying you should lie. Because yeah. packaging and lying are two but different But eventually things. when they catch up with you on the meetup, you don't they see will, the real thing. Yeah. Yeah. And knows. the thing is actually your friend said that it's not my fault what you think of mm -hmm. me. Because mm -hmm. he is eating that food. Nobody yeah, eating the exactly. food. Exactly. <laughs> He's thinking like, he's showing you, should he say hashtag paid for by my company? No, I don't think he should say hashtag paid for, for my company. What should he but say? as you see it every day, you just think, oh, you're a fancy guy, you have this fancy well, life. So you lose the job now, all of a sudden. You're, yeah, you're basic. Your, <laughs> the person seeing yeah. it was thinking that mm -hmm. that's them, that's their fault. Not so his. you think that people can so basically it miscalculate? Like the taste. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so you take it as good taste as opposed yeah, to money? So, no, like, would I don't you, know how you, to put that. Like, I wouldn't necessarily, if I see someone eating good food every day, I'm not literally really thinking of the numbers are going to be. I mean, I, don't uh -huh. think I need to take more yeah. pictures when I'm away. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. When I'm yeah. home, yeah, I'm like, not uh, really yeah. 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 Maybe if I travel a lot or maybe if I post a lot of pictures outside, mm -hmm. It might God, come like, across, yeah, across like, travel all, all the time, all the time. Yeah. 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 but it's but just that's the thing with social media. Like we take pictures of or videos of that particular moment. So I could be eating at a restaurant, and I'll take a picture of that particular moment, or I could just be passing next to um, a hotel, and I see this beautiful, um, I don't know, arrangement. Yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. And I'm like, let me just stand there and take a picture for my Instagram mm -hmm. or for my Snapchat or I don't know my Twitter or something like that. And it's mm -hmm. just because like. At that particular moment, I liked what I saw, so I decided to take a two-second picture. But like, it does not necessarily mean that I'm that going to stay life. at that, staying in that hotel yeah in that hotel life. or anything mm -hmm. like that. So that's the thing. I think that's the concept of social media. People do not understand that it literally takes two seconds to stand, pose, and take a picture. And it doesn't necessarily mean that okay, this is like is my it. life. At some point, this is me. Yourself, of course, to create all this illusion and you don't actually live it, you have to deal with it, and that's torture. Yeah, yeah, and that's what, so that even brings me to what's what's the Drake lyric that he said? You mm -hmm. take a picture, like if you if you went to Cuba, or went mm -hmm. on holiday, and you take pictures and you, and you keep posting, them. you <laughs> save them and keep posting them as if you're on the go. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes we leave what is actually true. You've had, you've you've been in Cuba, mm -hmm. you've taken pictures whilst yeah. you were there. It's okay to throw a little TBT, mm -hmm. but sometimes somebody can DM you and be like, "Are you still yeah, in?" Yeah. You know what I mean. So that's why I say, yeah, where, where, what is their business. It's, I don't think it's, it's, I don't think it's what is their business, yeah. but I think that with social media, it, we become so lost in the maze mm. that it's because of, if we bring it back to the story now, yeah. this woman 
uh, might have had a serious business issue where she's like, oh my God, the quickest way to get this money and she probably wanted to borrow it was to take it from the pension. But at the same time, she's projected this committed to excellence image. Mm. She's buying Chanel bags. She's. Mm. I think that if you were a bit more pulled back, because yeah. this is where social media can work against you, mm. where with relationships, you put everything online, with selling the best version, do you? Do we really need to sell? Well, you, yeah, sell? Do we need to sell? Your, I know people because it's do like, if you don't put your relationship out there, then no, nobody's going to come and no, come for you. people yeah. that don't put their relationship out there on social media, but still get cheated on, or mm-hmm. they still break up eventually at the end of the day and I know that some people that have documented literally their relationships since the first day they met and they're still together about to get married Mm -hmm. do you get what I mean so it depends on the individual you're with I don't think Mm -hmm. it has anything to do with social media of course like people can try to get into your business and you know Mm -hmm. try to like you know maybe message um, your partner or whatnot but like at the end of the day it is up to them to know that, okay, I'm with this person for a reason and social media is just social media. Mm-hmm. I'm just literally posting pictures and I, I videos. I don't think people take these things too seriously. I don't know. It's like people take social media too seriously. It's like people posting things. Like, it's their business. Like, exactly. I don't care about it. No, but I don't think anybody like, cares. That's like the general rule. No, I don't think anybody cares. I don't care. Like, people watch her. Like, why she's doing that? She's here to yeah. I'm like, but if it's so, if it bothers you, unfollow the person. Mm. Why are you following exactly. someone who bothers so are you, exactly. so, so with, with, so are you not moving? by likes are you saying that if you post a picture and nobody likes it you, you've never felt a certain kind of way or it has or you, you maybe you've come to that place now that you're like you know what this social media is not good because i put social media down like mm-hmm. i mean short of today i hadn't mm-hmm. posted on social media like properly i post on my story every yeah. now and then but yeah. i can give it a good you know what sit down because yeah. that's yeah. really not where my money is actually exactly. coming from yeah. mm-hmm. that's just facts mm-hmm. so it's not that People care and people are watching your life. It's just, oh, ah, yeah, the way they'll say, ah, you're always in London. Or mm-hmm. oh, you're always, blah, blah, blah. I'm not even stopping to think of whether, uh, well, maybe she just posts yeah. <laughs> when she travels these. I'm not looking at the dates some, of your yeah. picture. Some, some people do. Go through the comments. Do you think that's a problem? I think, I think it's a disease yeah. to monitor someone Somebody. so much. Yeah. Yeah. So no, my, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that if someone wants to lie on social media, mm-hmm. None of my business. Mm. Like, I literally don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do you think about the hashtag, you know, the small girl, big God, you know, the set, like, the... Small girl, the, big God, and, like, the those slay kind of, That is pro- slay queens, what that like, is, is, what are is, we projecting? No, no. It's projecting nothing. Someone mm-hmm. feels like slay queen was girls who always slay, you know, the highest point of view, slaying is a slay queen. Small mm-hmm. girl, big God, I'm a small girl, I worship it. Like, literally, you know, my... What does the small girl, girls, big God mean? I don't even... No, I think it started from, I know when I first started seeing it, like a few years, it's like old. This is mm-hmm. not the first time. I saw a friend of mine is a hashtag, maybe like last year. And I was like, oh, I'm a small girl and I have a big God. Finish. That was it. Okay. My, but the thing with those two things, if you notice, notice, there are two things which belong to women. Mm-hmm. And patriarchy taints anything feminine. Mm-hmm. As long as women like it, patriarchy mm-hmm. is going to make it look like a dirty yeah, thing. Then, yeah. Yeah. So I think it was a friend of mine who did this awesome Twitter thread about how everything that is feminine is made to look like it's worse. Mm-hmm. Like the opposite of a governor is a governess. But mm-hmm. they're two different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The opposite of a master is mistress. Mm-hmm. Two mm-hmm. different yeah, things. Mm-hmm. Bachelor spins that which one looks worse, worse. all the time. Yeah. The mm-hmm. female mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. People, men, don't like seeing women enjoy themselves. So, so you you don't have an issue with the slay queen. You feel women should go what for it and call your though? Exactly. Exactly. Like, uh, so it's slay queen. Exactly. If I wake up oh, today no. and I want to like wear something that I feel like I feel comfortable in, and you think I look good, I'm slaying, and I think I'm just I just woke up and I just wore what I feel like wearing. Like, is, I, am I, I, I a slay queen? Like, so I think that sometimes you so sometimes you can have you can see somebody's page and like you said, projecting the best version of yourself mm-hmm. where it's like, let's face it, do you come out of your house every day looking like this? Okay, so when you look at somebody's... No, that, no, that's fine, but I'm just trying to explain to you mm-hmm. like the, the, how it, it mm-hmm. comes across. I know I don't wake up every day looking mm-hmm. like this. Yeah. So if my Instagram, every picture you see mm-hmm. looks like this, I think it's the fast. No, you know what I mean? We are all human beings and we have common sense. We know nobody wakes up looking at this. No, not everybody has common sense. But what I'm saying well, then is that, that, is that what I'm saying is that should we okay, only imagine, project... You know, like your job, right? Imagine you're yes. filming every single day. So you have yes. to put on makeup every yes. day. And every day whilst you put on makeup, you take mm-hmm. a picture. Mm-hmm. That's you. But then, but then obviously, when, when you close, close work, you've taken your makeup, makeup off. Mm-hmm. How do you, how do, you yeah, do you take a picture <laughs> when you're in bed and post it? No, no, no. So what I'm saying is how much of ourselves should we sort of like 360? Should there be a ratio of show everything about you? That's what I'm saying. So in being real, 
if be you're you. saying in being you and being real, I don't wake up like this every day. I know some people that wake up in the morning and they will take a picture with like a messy hair, no makeup. Oh, with a bonnet. Like yeah. I think like Instagram yeah. stories exactly. without makeup, with makeup. Well, that's the point. There are no rules. You do, it's, it's my personal Instagram page. Mm-hmm. I can do what I feel like with it. And if someone else so goes, social media doesn't like, challenge your confidence in yeah. any way, shape, or form. I know it, no. sometimes I might like, bother doesn't... a few people because, like, when you see some people like elevating or even just maybe portraying this type of life, you might think, "Oh my god, what am I doing in my life?" The thing with social media is that you can get really lost in it. Yeah. You can see somebody always posting something or even it could be true Mm -hmm. they are doing something great they are successful and you're just there sitting down like oh my god maybe just got out of uni i don't have a job yet i'm still looking for a job what am i doing with my life and Mm -hmm. you just it depresses you sometimes you get what i mean Mm -hmm. and that's the thing with social media is like people are so caught up in it that you can go on somebody's page and you're like, wow, this person is doing so well. Mm-hmm. What am I doing with my life? Mm-hmm. Please. Like, yeah. God, why? Yeah. Yeah. I think they feel they need to be validated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it, it's natural to feel that because we're human beings. It's yeah. natural yeah. to feel, oh, this is you. Ah, you know, you see mm-hmm. people with private jets and I'm like, oh, why mm-hmm. am I not like that? But then yeah. it's not their responsibility to make you to make feel you secure. Feel yeah. It's you that should say, okay, you know what? This is a bit much. Let me... It's like, okay, I work in gender. So mm-hmm. I deal with a lot of, you know, domestic violence, rape, assault. Mm-hmm. It's stressful. Every day I see the actual worst that men do to women. Mm-hmm. And my husband is lovely. And sometimes I can take that anger from work and put it on him. Mm-hmm. So what I like, like last week or so, I did a Twitter blackout where mm-hmm. I didn't go on Twitter. Because every time I went on Twitter, I saw something about you know, some woman being beaten, being raped. And it yeah. was stressing me out. Mm-hmm. So I took a break. And then when I was okay, I started to you know, come back little by little. So... And that is something serious. That is actually people getting killed. But if you're bothered by people in private jets or why is she always in London or why is she here, then there's a problem. There's something wrong with you (laughs) Mm -hmm. personally. I mean, you can mm-hmm. admire them and say, oh my God, they motivate me to do better. Mm -hmm. But then once you start feeling some type of way, or some type of like hatred because this person mm-hmm. is acc- accelerating in yes. life. That's when there's a problem with you. And it's human mm-hmm. nature to feel so, 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 so much. I mean, I, I, I shot because of what I see on social media. You know, I every information I need now, I, I get it on social, social media. media. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even just, just from, from you or you know, being yeah. a parent yeah. or just yeah. recommending something. Mm-hmm. So I know information is well, wasted, which is why I don't. I don't like guys are all in support of of the social media. I'm actually I'm disciplined. I'm not. All over the place. Yes. Um, you should be. I that, mean, that's I can be. Good. But sorry, what's all over the place? Not all over the place. Exactly. Like, Define all over the place in the context of social media. I love media. social media. I yeah. post a lot on social media. media no, I so. But it's just that um, people, some some people would post a lot of people like, every second, every minute. Mm. Okay. You know, they're constantly looking for content, doing this and that. Like, I just. But that's the job. I, like a blogger. Not, it's a job. No, yeah, no, no, no. Listen, if I could do it, I'll be doing it. I can't do it. Let me celebrate. But I'm just. Maybe I didn't say it properly, but I'm just not, you know, if I'm not on social media. You're not doing too much. Yeah, Yeah. it it, it doesn't bother you. You're not doing the most. Yeah. But I don't think there should be rules because you don't know what information is relevant to somebody else. So you can't say, also, this is how you should use your personal social media. Mm -hmm. Everybody should say how they want to. Then you now get to filter the information. I think that that if we, I think, you know what, we can have this conversation like, we'll we'll (laughs) probably continue, uh, you know, after (laughs) the show. But I think that if we blanket that statement and generalize and say that, everybody can use social media the way they want to, then then our future is very dangerous because it I is. think that there are a it lot of hashtags dangerous. and there are a lot of movements that I don't find to be productive for society. There's hate on Muslims, religion. There's so many no, things no, that no, 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 social no. media when is used I, to emphasize. So if you're just I mean, blanketing, no, no, no. oh, is your page and you can do whatever, then we're not taking no, accountability for what we should. Harm. I yeah. said I live my life by the harm principle. Mm-hmm. As long as I'm not harming myself, I'm not harming mm-hmm. anybody else, I'm not harming the environment. What I do is my personal business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what I mean when I say yeah. you can. So someone taking a picture of their made-up face every single day, it's not hurting anybody. Yeah. Someone taking a picture in private jets yeah. or New York that's Today, Miami, business. it's not yeah. hurting anybody. Mm-hmm. So why should I censor them doing something that obviously makes yeah. them feel good? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think in this topic, I guess the, the, the woman's gonna have to pay somehow. I hope the top. I hope the no, girl she, gets. I hope the girl gets her but her money no, over five she, years. Exactly. Of somebody owing five you years. money. I mean, you, yeah, I mean, girl. You, <laughs> well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you guys so okay. much for being so Thank candid. You for Thank us. you for coming on the show. If you like the conversation, you can join by using the hashtag Chick Chat Live. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time on Chick Chat Live.